media wishes, Cyril Ramaphosa would have achieved 80% ANC victory, and yet, in reality, the ANC support reduced in all provinces under his leadership. The entire capitalist establishment, including international media, tried to impose Ramaphosa on the people of South Africa, and a significant number refused to be puppets. The reality is that despite being presented as the best of the best, Ramaphosa performed worse than Jacob Zuma, meaning that to ordinary people, Ramaphosa is not better than Jacob Zuma. While we welcome the results, we believe that the Independent Electoral Commission should develop adequate internal capacity to prevent voters from casting their ballots more than once. The IEC should build capacity to tally the number of voters on a constant basis. The manner in which the IEC system of voter verification and consolidation of votes is, structures, is structured can be abused. The EFF is concerned with the reports of double voting and believe that to avoid mistakes and to properly understand the nature and extent of the problem, the IEC should hire independent auditors to look into the extent, scale and scope of double voters. When the 2021 local government election happened, IEC should have modernized its system and monitoring capacity to prevent double or triple voting. The IEC must be beyond reproach because in its incapacity and incompetence will lead to violence and unworkable political uh, environment. The sixth parliament must immediately give the IEC a clear mandate to modernize and improve its system and, and monitor such so that we don't have the problem we encountered when the local government election happened in 2021. We have received endless complaints about some EFF councillors who never participated in advancing the work of the elections. In fact, some have long been absent from organizational work, including refusing to buy buggies as per resolution of the central command team. It is important to underscore that positions of the EFF are not for self-seeking careerists. Councillors and all public representatives are called upon to advance the work of the revolution. If you will not participate in building the EFF, you cannot represent it in any council, legislature or parliament. We shall therefore be recommending a special disciplinary process to the CCT to deal specifically with councillors who have absconded and defied the organization during election period. Our people shall never be disappointed with the mandate they have given us. We are going to parliament and legislature with more determination to ensure that all our manifesto commitments are realized. Our national chairperson and treasurer general will not be taking up their seats in parliament. We felt that our national chair will better serve our revolution outside parliament, and our TG will not be available due to ill health. The EFF's immediate task in parliament will be the completion of the work that could not be completed by the fifth democratic parliament, which include amendment of section 25 of the constitution to allow for expropriation of land without compensation, amendment of the South African Reserve Bank Act to discontinue private shareholders in the bank, amendment of the Banks Act to allow the existence of state-owned banks, an enactment of law that will make it compulsory for all government departments and entities to insource workers, particularly security guards, cleaners, and general workers. We demand that Ramaphosa must reduce the cabinet and do away with deputy ministers. If he, if, if he does not do this, it will be a declaration of war and we shall respond decisively. Parliament is no playground and its teeth will bite whenever necessary. We shall work hard to realize 100% free education where the state provides funding up front, including for accommodation and study material. Early childhood development must be professionalized and integrated into basic education system where teachers are directly paid by the state like all other teachers. 
will ensure that all girl children in schools and universities get free sanitary towels, including at home through clinics. We will fight for the 24-hour clinic to be realized across the country with full medication and competent nursing staff. We shall demand that all people with, the, with, with disabilities must be given free houses in a period of 12 months. The state must provide wheelchairs to all who require them. Any country that does not care for people with disability cannot claim a clean human rights record. We shall further demand that there should be a three-month period declared and dedicated to cleaning all black township and informal settlements. Following this, a clear strategy of sustainability of how cleaning must be developed and adhered to. We shall do the same in municipalities where we have influence. And when we take over Tswani, we'll prioritize sustainable refuse collection and cleaning of township. Our people deserve better. The days of subjecting them to living in absolute proximity to rubbish must come to an end. We will be zooming into financial sector to uproot anti-black racism and general marginalization of black people from investment. We shall fight to the end against all the banks that hate black people and treat them simply because they are black as high risk. Finally, we reiterate our call for African unity. We shall continue to advocate for free movement of goods and people in the African continent, which is long overdue. We shall never retreat from this principle, even if in the immediate it seemed to threaten our electoral growth. We shall never compromise principle for political expediency. The unity of African continent is paramount to the success of any of its individual countries, including South Africa. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let us attend the first round of uh, questions from yourselves, uh, members of the media. Number one, number two. So if you are at the back, please try to stand so I can see your hand. I'm very vertically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be number one at the back, you'll be number two. You'll be number three. Okay. Number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. So there's eight of you. Let's start with the first four. Okay, number one. I am Katepo Mabasa with the Daily Maverick. My first question is that now that you have added 19 more seats in Parliament, and with the record from the last Parliament that 15 of your 25 MPs were replaced, with the increase in seats and increase in members in Parliament, Uh, is that still the, the cost of action in Swan and Truman? And then, uh, I
on the campaign cost, how much did the total campaign of the year that the cost towards the election? Number four is um, what do you answer to those who claim that in some of your interviews and speeches you have indirectly promoted violence towards the white communities? <coughs> My second question would be, now that you are the third political force in the country, do you think you have a role in appeasing the tensions? And you are? What? What's, what's I work for French, French TV. TV. Come again? For French TV? You are? I work for French TV. And what is your name? You are? Hi, my name is Martin. Martin. Martin from French TV. Last, yeah. Okay, the last question, just repeat. Yeah, the last question is, now that you are the third political force in the country, do you think you have a role in appeasing the tension that they are? What is that? <laughs> what? Appeasing which tension? Uh, the tension in between communities. Okay. <laughs> All right, President, uh, I'm inclined to stop at number four, but if you're okay, I can go on. You should, because there are no questions. Okay, number five. Uh, Innocent from uh, Lab World News. Uh, CSC, I've been following the campaigns of the EFF, and in many a times you have been talking about shared value, not for investors only, but for employees as well. Uh, let's look at the township economy. The malls have crippled spaza shops. Uh, as a result, when they try to get a space or rent out a, a, a place in the mall, it becomes expensive for them to do so. Um, are we likely to see the EFF going after the malls to advocate for spaza shops? And again, what is your uh, defining factor in the next five years as the economic freedom fighters? Number six. Something more simple from PNC. Since we are saying you will be taking over governance in China, who is your mayoral candidate for China? And who would you be looking in voting with in council to remove the Democratic Alliance in the Makalaba from the mayoral seat in the capital city in South Africa? And then what do you attribute the growth of the economy of freedom fighters, particularly in the province of Kwazulu Natal, where you've in 2014 had 80,000 votes, if I'm not mistaken, weighing up to just over 300,000 in these past elections. How would you attribute your tremendous growth in that province of Kwazulu Natal and also the growth that you have shown in Mbumalana? What is attributed to the growth of the EFF? Thank you. Number seven. Maybe we need to stop then. <laughs> okay, because we'll come back to seven and Because we now got questions. Um, <laughs> No. I think that the EFF growth in KZN and Umalanga is as a result of hard work. If you notice, the growth is in Eastern Cape, KZN, and Umalanga. Um, the, the, in, in Umalanga, we deployed the deputy president. We deployed Commissar Veronica. We deployed Mamre Neyve. That was a solid team. Um, and then in KZN, we dissolved KZN, deployed our people, restructured. We dissolved everything, including the membership. So we started working from the ground. When we dissolved our structure in KZN, we were accused of factionalism and paging. And when we said to you, Samkel, no, we didn't perform well in the local government election, which is a it's an indicating factor that there is laziness. We dissolved membership. There was no member of EFL. We recruited from the first member upward. And then this is how we got the result. We do the same in Eastern, in Eastern Cape. Marshall was deployed in Eastern Cape to revive the EFF there. When we went to the conference, we took him out, take him to KZN. Mbuisen was deployed in KZN. Once we delivered the conference, we took him out, deployed him to Khaute. All these provinces which we dissolved and redeployed, re-strategized in terms of organizational growth, we then experienced growth now with um, uh, national elections. Precisely because there was sufficient time deployed in strengthening the organization. We deployed our national chair in Eastern Cape. There were no results. We had to take the deputy president from Pumalang to go and reinforce in Eastern Cape because we're scared that if Eastern Cape is not going to grow as expected, it will then undermine every other growth everywhere in South Africa. 
And when we deployed the deputy president in Eastern Cape, we now started experiencing growth. That rally of Eastern Cape were told by, amongst others, our national chair that it must be postponed because it was not going to take place. That's how challenged we were. The deputy president with the team moved in a Tuesday of the rally, mobilized, and we had a rally on Saturday. The reality of the situation is that our national chair is a senior counsel forever in consultations, forever in courts, and doing those many other things which are indirectly complementing the cause. But it doesn't translate into strengthening the organization. So upon identifying that witness, we said we must zoom into that space. And then we increased in the, in the Eastern Cape. We increased in the Western Cape, where the Secretary General was deployed, and Free State. But we believe much more could have been done in Western Cape and Free State, particularly in Free State. We could have done much better if we had more like Deputy President of the EFF or Mamri Neilwe or people like that in the Free State. So those who were deployed in the Free State didn't give us what we had expected. In, in free state. That's, that's a reality we are dealing with. So, uh, uh, so you, 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 you have to invest in the organization because there is general laziness amongst leaders, but also just incapacity to think outside the box. The general incapacity to think outside the box. People become wheelbarrows. When deployed, if you leave them there and go to Polokwane, you still find them where you left them. So we, 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 we have identified that and we, we, we hope to deal with it. So there's nothing that happens through a miracle. You ought to go and, and strengthen the organization. So where you see insignificant growth is because the organization is challenged there is challenged and we'll have that honest discussion and open about it in the national people's assembly we are going to uh, in, in 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 december whether certain people must be retained where they are or not because you shouldn't uh, uh, beg friendship at the expense of the organization the organization must grow and if people are not adding value they must be told you know the adding value this is not friendship. You add value or you ship out. It has to be like that. Otherwise, we are going to experience what the ANC is experiencing. The ANC is unable to grow because they are not honest to each other. And there are no consequence management for non-performance. There must be consequence management for non-performance. Guerda goes and fix a, a sewer system within a day in Freiburg. He left Freiburg after fixing that sewer. The mayor is still the mayor. No one has lost a job. But Gwede's fixing of that sewer demonstrated that someone was not doing his or her job. But who takes responsibility? No one takes responsibility. That is ANC for you. The EFF must not become like that. The EFF, where it experiences non-performance must zoom in and act. It answers that sponsored question of Daily Maverick. There might be 90% replacement of MPs. We make no apology about it. As long as they do not perform. We don't see that as a witness. We replaced MPs in the fifth parliament. It never affected our performance in the elections. What does it mean? You did well. We are going to do it even in the sixth parliament. We are not going to see it with deadwoods, useless members of parliament who add no value. Because we are scared of a, a malicious daily maverick, we must not replace them. It will never happen. We are going to replace them and we will not make any apology about it. In the same way, we are going to replace these councillors of the EFF who are useless. I went to Free State and found a counselor who was on a maternity leave for 12 months. 
maternity leave. Don't touch them because the Daily Maverick will do a research and say, you have replaced so many counselors within a short space of time. In the EFF, there are consequences for non-performance. 12 months, 12 months maternity leave. We have said to them in August, buy buggies because we want to reach the villages and the farms. There are some who have not bought buggies. We are an organization here. If you can't adhere to an organizational instruction, who are you listening to? It means there are other masters that you are saving other than the organization. There ought to be consequences. There will be consequences. Now, uh, the mayoral candidate is going to be a leader of the EFF in Tswani. Not these celebrities of the EFF who are parading themselves. Every time there is a, a possibility of some responsibility, there are some who think they are well known, who think they can assume responsibilities in government. That nonsense must come to an end. EFF has got leaders in Tswan. Let leaders of EFF in Tswan lead the municipality of Tswan. Why should there be someone from Tuan who's going to lead Tuan municipality? What are you saying about those people of the EFF who continue to increase votes of the EFF in Tuan? Let EFF leaders in Tuan lead the municipality in Tuan. We are not passing any motion of no confidence. I don't know where you got that. We have been sitting here with you in the press conferences of the EFF. We never said we are going to pass any motion of no confidence. This is a power sharing. We are already talking to the DA. <coughs> We are sharing power in Jobek. We are sharing power in Tuan. So how are we going to do it? Let's do it in a manner that is not going to be disruptive. If the DA refuses, then these other options will come in. But so far we are talking and we don't see any hostilities about possibility of power sharing. We will have a mayor in Tuan. The DA will have MMCs in Tuan if they agree. They will have a mayor in Jobek. We will have MMCs in Jobek. I'm reluctant to remove the mayor of Jobek. You know why? Those ANC people hate Mashaba, and I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, they, they, every time they speak, that Mashaba is traumatizing them. So anyone that traumatizes the ANC is my hero. So the Mashaba is a big problem for the ANC. So why remove a person who is a big problem for the ANC? We support Mashaba, and we think he must remain. We don't know about this new chap of uh, DA. I think even himself, he knew very well that he's a caretaker. There's going to be elections, and every election comes uh, with uh, you know, changes. So there's no hostility, there's no motion of no confidence, there are no fights, there are talks about how do we share power since we are from elections. We spoke about the malls, and spaza shops. We said if people vote for the EFF, there will not be a mall built without shareholding of spaza shops because with a mall comes the collapse of spaza shops. South African people did not hear that. It means they are able with the current system. Let them continue with the current system. If there was EFF government, we'll say this is what we'll do. Uh, we will continue to fight for them. We'll continue to fight for shareholding of local business when malls are built. Because malls close down, shut down small business. Uh, there are no tensions in South Africa. There are tensions in France. There's burning in France. There's never been an SABC that left here and went to France and asked your president what is he going to do with tensions in France. Solve your tensions in France and stop imagining tensions in South Africa. There are no tensions here. You are living an imaginary life. You are imagining things. There are no tensions here. Wh which tensions? <laughs> eh? You come here, you are dreaming during the day. Eh? <laughs> during the day. Or there are tensions here. There are no tensions in South Africa. For? <laughs> eh? No, we've never, we've never uh, 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 perpetuated hatred. The a credible institution called South African Human Rights, of all the statements you want to complain about, 
They said these are not hate speeches. These do not fuel any violence. They might be robust. You might be scared. But that's how democracy is like in South Africa. It's robust. Sometimes we engage each other to a point you think we're even going to attack each other physically. It will not happen. So stop the imagination. There is no tension. There is no, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 indirectly uh, instigating violence. We have been here for five years. We have been speaking the same language. There's never been violence. Actually, if anything, we are the ones who go amongst violent communities and diffuse tension, especially between South Africans and fellow African brothers and, and sisters. We are the ones who have done that. Not through press conferences. We have gone into those communities, addressed them ourselves directly. So you are imagining a tension between black and white communities caused by EFF. It's not true. The tension that is there is an inequality uh, which exists in South Africa. It can only be resolved by not uh, EFF keeping quiet. No, it will be resolved by sharing the wealth. Yeah? Speak? Because you've got that uh, style, uh, that international style. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. What I'm doing is that uh, according to some people, there are people who claim that you have been accumulating pensions. Yeah. That's my question. I'm not coming in saying. Yeah, but 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 but, but if but if that. but if you store if you see some people, and <coughs> I don't know them, you don't mention their names. The only reasonable conclusion I can come to is that you are imagining things. Including if if it's not you, the people you are with, you you have a collective dreaming of things that do not exist. There are no tensions, my brother. Yeah, you can leave you can leave your cameras here and walk the township and walk the cities. You will never find that attitude. Our people will engage you and tell you of the problems of inequality that we're experiencing in this country. That is the biggest problem. The problem of whiteness, the problem of white superiority which think it's untouchable, and anyone that threatens its comfort, it's an enemy and must be projected as a monster. And we're not worried about that. We are making the comfortable to feel uncomfortable. And we're making the uncomfortable to feel comfortable and have hope that tomorrow will be better than today. We don't apologize about that. We want equality. We want white supremacy collapsed in South Africa. We want an equal society. If that is fueling tensions, I'm happy to fuel tensions. Thank you. Now, the land question will not be difficult to deal with in Parliament. The ANC has got a resolution that says land must be expropriated without compensation. We are going to push it. Cyril must oppose it because he wants to impress foreign investment, he wants to invest, impress his friends. Cyril is going to have a problem, and I say this for the second time. He deviates from the ANC policy. He's going to he give his enemies a weapon to destroy him in the National General Council uh, when it comes in June? Yes, June, uh, halfway uh, to the next conference. Because there is a plan to remove Cyril. He can deny it anyhow he so wish. He knows the truth is that he's going to be removed. He won't finish his term. Whereas he has reduced ANC votes. You can praise him because you think you, you are defending him. Ah, ah, he reduced <coughs> ANC vote. A darling of a Daily Maverick. A darling of News 24. A darling of Sanef has reduced ANC votes. 57%. The man has costed the ANC. Worse than what Zuma did to the ANC. Worse. He will still have to answer for that. He will have to answer for that. So the faction against him is well oiled, ready to attack. 
the cabinet, he goes around saying he's going to reduce cabinet. Good for all of us, good for South Africans, but not good for him and his factions in the ANC. They will not allow that. It's not only reducing cabinet. Cyril is caught between a rock and a hard place. Because after reducing cabinet, he has to bring credible people. The Women's League has already made a pronouncement that Batabile must come back. If Batabile comes back, it's clear Cyril has not done anything. It's not a new dawn. It's an old Vaseline. So there is a problem. The, the man is in crisis. Oppenheimers won't help him with that. The Ruperts won't help him with that. News 24 won't help him with that. They won't help him with factionalism. The man is in crisis. We'll see how he's going to survive that. Advertisement has increased. The budget has increased. It's true. You think increasing votes with, comes with reducing budget? <laughs> Iban, that's a bizarre question. That's a, that's a misinformed, sponsored question. We have increased the cost. We are in parliament. We are not in parliament in 2014. Yes. We got the money from the IEC. We didn't get the money in 2014. Yeah, Baba your heart is sore. You are pained by the fact that the EFF has put a powerful campaign. You are, you are pained by that reality. You are pained by the fact that we have increased seats. We have increased. We have increased. It must sink. You won't do anything about it. How can you compare 2014 budget with the 2019 budget when the party was not in parliament in 2019? When the party was eight months old? When the party was not collecting party levies from public representatives? You can answer that question in a newsroom without answer, asking anyone that question. There are certain questions you keep to yourself, especially if you want to sound smart. So we are doing well. You must go and tell Polyphon Vague, VBS or not VBS, we are cruising nicely. 44 members sing and give in parliament. We are entering. You thought you are doing VBS to destroy the EFF. You failed. Karima Brown failed. The whole South African media failed. The Ranjen Munsami failed. They've all failed. Stratcom failed. We defeated them. We defeated them. The most difficult campaign. We ran it successfully. Where are we now? We are still here. We are standing much, much better and more strong. The EFF is growing. You wanted to destroy the EFF. We told you the EFF was never made by the media. The EFF was made by security guards, by cleaners, by all those who are paid lower salaries. The EFF is made by... Uh, so black stars, journalists who are not paid salaries, those are EFF people, not sponsored views. So who are you to tell us? We don't need Karima Brown. We don't need Trevor Manuel. We need the hard-working leadership and ground forces of the EFF to remain focused. Retain. We are going back. Parliament. Who's going to be a speaker? Yo, my way. I don't know what's going to happen in that parliament. With 44 members, they will have to now hire more bouncers. Because it is not going to be easy. We are going to war. We are going to fight for black children. We want free education, and we don't compromise about it. Everything else we have mentioned in this statement, we are going to achieve it. Um, so, the ANC in reality, comrades, is that it didn't win elections in Gauti. They've manipulated like they did in 2014. It's okay. Why? The EFF must work hard to increase the numbers so that you don't allow manipulation. You allow manipulation through 
marginal increase. The ANC didn't get 50%. The ANC is going to govern Gauteng through fraud. They know that. They know that. They have not won elections. They know that. But we are a peace-loving organization that believes in the will of the people. Let the people decisively remove the ANC. But as long as we allow marginal growth all the time, we must know at the same time we are allowing manipulation of results. 50%. 50% for what? Where? The ANC must thank Muzwandi here in Gauti. And I told EFF in Gauti, I said, if you are not going to camp in Ikurulin, these people are going to disorganize us. Because the only area where the ANC is organized in Gauti is in Ikurulin. There is no ANC in, in Tswane. Those clowns of Tswane are so uh, clownish, they are amateurs. They don't know what they are doing, those ANC chaps in Tswane. Imagine the coalition with such things. Clownish people who are so amateurish. Do you know ANC Tswane exists for likes and retweets? And then uh, Pretoria News. They want to be in the Pretoria News. That's why the only thing those 20 people are obsessed with. I think that chairperson of uh, ANC, Floyd, joined Hosi Maipa. Yeah. I think he joined the ANC just recently when we were in the Youth League. Yeah. He's got no experience. Yeah. And if the ANC is going to rely on such a chap, they will never get that one again. And then he's got his, uh, a, a zombie, the zombie called Liceo from the youth league that one who failed to be youth league president those two they they are celebrities who wanna be and that's what they are obsessed with they are not obsessed with the ground so i was not worried about Tony. i was not worried about jube because uh, uh parks destroyed anc in jube and converted it into some elitist organization and he left this guy, uh, Jeff, Makubo. Jeff Makubo. They are so elitist that they don't do groundwork. If you ask Jeff, which street do you uh, frequent in Soweto? For sure, it's Vilagazi Street. And Vilagazi Street has become too elitist. So there's nothing wrong with being an elite, elitist, but do the groundwork if you want numbers. So I was not worried about Tony, Joe Beck. I was not worried about City Bank. I knew there is no ANC in City Bank. I know there is no ANC in Western. I said Mbuiseni was deployed in Gauteng. He will tell you. I said, guys, there is a problem there of a guy called Muzwandile who is obsessed with the ground. We need to go and attack that place, particularly Katoras. If we can't infiltrate Katoras, we must forget Look at what Muzwandile did. He pushed, maybe through manipulation or what, I don't know. He pushed it to 52. Had we kept Muzwandile where he was in 2016, we would not have allowed this manipulation at 50% in the province. So the only remaining asset for the ANC in Gauteng is Muzwandile. Can you imagine? That's the only asset they have. <laughs> That's the best they can produce. The rest are clownish. Tsohani, it will never help them. It will deteriorate the further and further. 2021 will be worse. So the EFF has to regroup. The EFF must pay attention. In Gauteng, must pay attention in Ikurulene. We may want to zoom in into Ikurulene and want to check the structures of the EFF, whether we don't need a dissolution, whether we don't have to collapse the membership, start building from the scratch, in preparation for 2021. The same thing must go to Limpopo. The, the marginal growth, we had a huge expectation in Limpopo. There's a problem there. If we're not going to zoom into that province and want to over-glorify friendship, the EFF will not grow in that province. We have to go. We will do that in our CCT. 
We'll do that in our post-election assessment to see if indeed the problem is organizational or not. You have to get the organization right first. If you can't get the organization right, there's nothing you can do politically if you want to challenge the ANC. The ANC's inability to grow is the organizational challenges. Northwest, <coughs> Northwest, the ANC will never recover from, from what is, is, is experienced. We are very happy with the work the comrades have done in Northwest, in Gauteng, in Pumalang, in Eastern Cape, in KwaZulu Natal. We have to go into Free State, we have to go into Western Cape, we have to go into Northern Cape, we have to go into Limpopo and, uh, and strengthen. We are not happy with Northern Cape, we are not happy with Free State, we are not happy with Western Cape, we are not happy with Limpopo. We think we could have done more. We think we could have done more. Even Eastern Cape, we could have done more. I have explained earlier that we deployed our national chair, we didn't get the results we required, we had to reinforce him because the national chess career takes him away from what we expect him to do organizationally. And when we reinforced, we experienced what we have experienced. It, in Eastern Cape could have been worse if we had not moved in much quicker. In Western Cape and Free State was the Secretary uh, General. In Northern Cape was Deputy Secretary General. In Limpopo, Kauteng, uh, and Northwest, it was me who was deployed in the three uh, provinces. So we're all spread all over the country dealing with strengthening the election machinery. You don't over-celebrate and mislead yourself. Don't over... Where there are weaknesses, you have to acknowledge them and start working harder, like we did in 2016. We didn't over-celebrate. We identified problems in Eastern Cape, in KwaZulu-Natal. We moved in. Look at the results now. KwaZulu-Natal, it's a, it's a cherry on top. We, we, we are more than happy with KwaZulu-Natal. We, we actually... Uh, uh, surprised ourselves. Uh, uh, we, 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 how many? 350? More than 350,000. More than 350,000 in KwaZulu Natal. Uh, uh, and we thank Commissar Marshall and the collective which was deployed there. We thank the leadership of the EFF in KwaZulu Natal which did not refuse to be led. Because in other provinces you get people who refuse to be led. <clears throat> who think they know, who defy leaders. We sometimes say, no, Chairperson they didn't do this. Country Chairperson had to first fight with the so-called provincial chair, who says, I was elected, I was elected. You're elected, but you're useless. Let's help you. Let's help you. Some people refuse to be helped. So it's a difficulty we're confronted with. Now, some of them have got the numbers Hey, they are assuming their positions now. As chairperson, hey, when we try to talk to them, no, 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 no. As a province, we think this is the way to go. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we did our work. We have given you numbers. You can take over from now and, and run the EFF. So we think we are, we are, we are fine, uh, 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 comrade uh, uh, Somlo. Thank you, President. Let's go to number seven and eight. Can you raise your hands again? All right. Let's... And is there anyone else? So you'll be number nine. <coughs> and didn't you speak? Oh, you'll be number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Sure. Number seven. Okay, sure. I'll partially cover my colleagues to swim in the family. Very good. Very good. You're on record. Um, I remember saying that uh, you would clinch a counting on the ANC and you dismissed the polls that were obviously in the house into the elections. Um, what will you do differently now going forward? I know you've been talking that you obviously 
read the process and people like Moon around in this part. What do you think um, led to the fact that the EFF did not win our black majority? In fact, you didn't win. It, like you said, you, 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 you see partially um, attributed the ANC's success to the black majority. But what is it that you're going to do to ensure that it's going to be this for you to have extended And um, sorry, my second question is about the cabinet reshuffle, I mean, the, the reconfiguration of the cabinet. What is the EFS view? Would you perhaps have a certain number where you want to see the cabinet be reduced, or <coughs> you just want um, the President Damaposa to make changes where he deems necessary? Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, number eight. <coughs> it's, uh, Nayazo from Power FM. Um, in, in Nazareth, when you were, I think, we were campaigning, you mentioned that um, you would reconsider working with the DA because it had been hostile towards the EFF, but the ANC had not been hostile towards you guys. Has that stance changed? And the second question is, that there's a significant growth of the one party that is completely opposed to, 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 to you guys as far as uh, the a uh, you guys and the ANC is concerned, as far as the land issue is concerned, and that's the FF plus. I am not faced by their growth in parliament uh, regarding that. Okay, number nine. Yeah. Yes. Good afternoon. And thank you for taking my questions in order for not work 24. I just wanted to ask uh, the president of the EFF, what is his take on Trevor Noah? How can you find it you on the decision? I see me drawing comparisons between yourself and Donald Trump. Number ten. Garcia uh, from Heart TV News. Um, I think it was the first campaign before the one that you guys had recently, um, where a political analyst had said that uh, it is quite important that we're giving land to people and uh, houses and jobs. It's quite important that those people are skilled. Uh, how do you plan to make sure that people are skilled well in hand to them handling things such as land? Uh, and making sure that the education system that the lecturers and teachers are well trained uh, to train rather uh, students who are coming there uh, freely. Uh, and then also I did not hear, uh, the second question is also that I did not hear a clear um, answer to uh, my colleague's question about uh, the campaign costs. Thank you. Number 11. No, we can't give you an amount. You can ask it 15 times. We don't have the amount. We just come from the elections now. The, the budget increased, I answered it. The budget increased as to what are the figures. We'll have to go and reconcile everything. We're now removing the posters. It's another election cost. Mm -hmm. Number 11. Um, from Africa. I just want to find out from you. You said that um, you deem um, the ANC to be significant power in most of the provinces due to organizational challenges. Does this also show you beginning to become the alternative for many South Africans, I mean 1.8 million South Africans voted for your party. And um, are, do you think that more people are beginning to be tired of the ANC? Is so that where you're from? East of Africa. This one. This one, yeah. I thought she was from the ANC. <laughs> uh, number 12. <clears throat> Can we uh, have one press conference? Sure. You said the Reserve Bank discontinued bond shares. You know, some countries interfere the independence. Some countries interfere the independence of Reserve Bank. If you nationalize the Reserve Bank, how do you ensure the independence? And how the government will ensure the independence of Reserve Bank? Because the government has its own rule. And uh, shortly, can you please comment on the Venezuela issue? You know the situation is out of control there now, the foreign intervention there. Thank you. Okay, the last person. Okay, um, good afternoon. My name is Sotwana from Sama HDZU. I've got two questions, and then the first one is, what are your thoughts regarding FF Plus sending uh, one of Fair Boots and Sun, as well as he's also the son of the um, the Orenia, the founder of the Orenia in Parliament. And then the second question is, since you've been spot on with your predictions, um, you, you predicted the uh, Alex shutdown as well as the mayor of Guazmina uh, State. What 
country because firstly it holds different views uh, to what imperialist forces I advocate for and uh, secondly is because they want to impose their own puppet. They want that oil uh, resource in that country and we do not agree uh, with uh, uh, imperialism imposing itself on the uh, Venezuelan people. Let the Venezuelan people uh, decide their own future. Um, the, the good thing is that uh, you, the international media, only show the one side of uh, American puppets. You don't show the side of Maduro supporters who are defending the revolution uh, in that uh, uh, country. So while with Maduro, we support uh, 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 the, the current government in Venezuela against the imperialist uh, forces. Uh, we are the alternative. Oh, let me first congratulate you. Someone asked me in the last press conference if I had seen the new uh, channel. And uh, I think after the elections, we were able to now have access to television and watch the news. I think that uh, it's, a, it's a promising station. I think you've got uh, uh, the right <coughs> attitude. And uh, you are going all out to try and give a, a balanced uh, a view and uh, um, the only advice I have for you is uh, invest in uh, sending your crews all over uh, the country do it different because these other ones concentrate where there is easy access but we long for a station where the problems of the rural masses uh, can equally be shown on TV uh, the struggling, the struggles and the sufferings of rural women can be covered live on on a television. And uh, uh, um, after uh, the funeral, I was in Limpopo. I just came back today. I'll be going back. Uh, I had an opportunity to watch TV, and we have an we, we have an alternative now. We we can change from here to here, uh, and. Uh, uh, we are no longer subjected to that whiteness and, and DA type of a uh, perspective, uh, which is permanent uh, and, and traumatic. Uh, uh, so we, we, we are better off now. And uh, uh, you must be given support. You must be given, you know, chance to prove yourself. Uh, 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 there, there were many stories about Cloudy being involved, Mani being involved. And uh, I don't see any of that element. Um, uh, so I don't think that we, 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 we ought to destroy a station based on suspicions and rumor mongering and petty jealousy. Uh, let's give them a chance. These are black people, although you are not uh, uh, independent, as they may want to suggest, you are multi-choice. A station because the money comes from the multi choice. Am I right? Yes, yes. yes. So, but uh, so far I'm happy with what what I've seen, and uh, uh, you 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 must be given support. I think uh, we should arrange Mbuisen uh, so we pay a courtesy visit uh, so we can be shown around. Um, I've, I've never been to uh, N and seven stations. <laughs> Even before we declared problems, I just had a feeling that there's a problem there, and I, I, I must never go there. But I don't think it's the same here. We, we must visit and endorse uh, what looks like an alternative. Please, multi-choice, put more money, put more money, let them buy the, 
the mob events, let them go and cover everywhere. Uh, uh, so we are happy with that. We are an alternative to the ANC. We have grown, and I will answer that question the same, at the same time with the one of dismissing the polls and losing Khauti. You can't lose that which you never had. I've won Khauti because our numbers have increased <coughs> in Khauti. So when I said to you we are going to win, I was not lying. We have won. We have not lost a single vote. Um, and the ANC lost Khauti. Uh, and we have described how they remained in power. Uh, it's not through an honest contestation. It's through fraudulent uh, uh, processes. So everywhere else the ANC lost, the EFF gained, which is a clear sign or material evidence that we are an alternative to the ANC. The ANC votes go to the, to the EFF. We are going to give our people uh, land. Those things of education will come, will find us on the way. We can, we can no longer postpone the land. Uh, the education, it's a way of wanting to keep us in a world drop. And say, no, you must first have a skill before you get the land. <laughs> we hear that, we agree with that. It will find us on the way. We are taking the land, we are educating at the same time. So, Education on the land question is priority, is number one, but it will not be a priority over the land. They run concurrently. We are no longer going to say, let's skill our people first before we take the land. Let's take the land and skill our people at the same time. We love Trawanoa. We'll continue to laugh at his jokes. He's our brother. He's doing well. He's entitled to his own opinions. He's in, he, he must refuse to be used. He must refuse. He, he, Trevor Noah can say anything he wants to say about me. So many things were said about me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know me. A lot of people do not know me. And they draw a lot of conclusions about me. <coughs> so let him say, say whatever he wants to say about me. Uh, 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 let him say whatever he wants to say about the EFF. It's a free country, um, uh, and, and we still wish him well, and we hope his joke was made genuinely, not because he was trying to appease his masters he visited at Danny Hayes in Cape Town, and they took him to Parliament. I hope that is not what influenced him. I will, I will continue to watch him. South Africans should continue to watch him. South Africans should continue to support him. Uh, despite all the nonsense he said, he remains one of our own. Uh, uh, some brothers can sell you for their own survival. Yeah. We've had them during apartheid. We still have them today. So he's not, he's not a shocker. Um, uh, he's not different to Joe Mama Sel. Uh, he's not different from uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's father. Mm. I mean... We have such types. We had them before. We have them today. But uh, let's hope it got him a, a what do you call it, a, a higher viewership. <laughs> uh, 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 because uh, uh, that's what they exist for. We really, we shouldn't be angry at jokes. Uh, it's a joke. So he, he's, let's not be angry at jokes. Uh, <laughs> jokes we laugh at. We don't get angry at jokes. We, we laugh at jokes. Um, uh, so I'm looking for uh, Tzavendas' grandson uh, so that uh, the, the Tzavendas' grandson can sit in parliament with the grandson of her foot. <laughs> and then uh, the Lord will decide what needs to happen. Maybe history will repeat itself. I don't know <laughs> or what will happen in parliament. They will. So we must hire Tzavendas' grandson. Uh, to come and provide water there in, <laughs> <laughs> in Parliament and uh, find a, a, a grandson of a, a fair food. I'm happy whites are taking a position. We told you these people are racist and you think we're exaggerating. Look at what they do when a white interest is threatened. They immediately go 
and vote for a racist organization, which is evidence enough. Uh, anyone who says, no, you guys are over-exaggerating, no, 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 no. Look at them when a white privilege is threatened. They immediately regroup to defend white privilege. These are votes of racists who are defending white privilege. And, and I'm happy that this number must continue to grow and grow. Why? Because it's a clear evidence that someone is decisively dealing with white interest. They can feel it now. I wouldn't be happy if whites don't go in a defense mode. It means we are not reaching them. We are reaching them. They are now in a defense mode because the white privilege is threatened. This is evidence enough. You've got evidence that we are now crushing white privilege. That's why it takes uh, Fervutri's grandson to parliament. They make no apology about apartheid. They don't apologize. You are the ones who are apologizing for having been oppressed. You are so apologetic. But we are patient with you. Because ours is to liberate the mind of an African child. And slowly, slowly, National Chair were getting there. The, the liberated mind in 2014 was 1 million. Now it's more than 1.8 million. Almost 2 million. It means black children are beginning to appreciate that they ought to fight white privilege. And white privilege is responding because it feels threatened. This is evidence uh, enough. We said we'll reconsider working with the DA because of its attitude. And uh, we said the ANC in the election context, election, you know in 2014 the ANC disrupted our events. We couldn't hold a meeting without ANC people coming to disrupt us. I was saying this time is different. We are being, this time in the election, we are being disrupted by DA with a poster that says stop EFF and ANC with an advert that says EFF stole your VPS money. They were being disruptive and were like, you know, people who you help with such votes in Tony and Jobek come to you with such attitude. You will be reluctant to even work with them uh, going forward. So we are now talking. We are talking to everyone about power sharing post elections. Let's see what the DA is offering. Let's see what the ANC uh, is offering. Uh, that's post-elections uh, uh, campaign. If, I mean, in, in Tony, I just demonstrated to you that if you say we must go and work with the ANC, it means we must work with Jose Maepa, who doesn't know what the ANC is. We must go, the senior person of the ANC in Tony, is Lise, what's Lise was saying, name, man? Lise Romakubel. That's the most senior person. That's the person who must work with in Tuan. And then join in the politics of Amachas. We don't have time for that. Amacharish politics. So uh, 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 we'll hear what the ANC is offering in Tuani and Jobe. I don't think they, they've got anything. And what is interesting is that I think this observation the ANC also makes the same. Because when the ANC negotiate, they don't say it's one. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's one. They just say, no, 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 no. They don't even give, give us anything. <laughs> they, they, they we can even allow you to take everything, all the seats. <laughs> because the ANC itself has got no confidence on those chaps of Tswan because of their childish, uh, playful behavior. Um, we want the cabinet reduced drastically. We may not put the number. The president has got uh, an option to tell us why he came to the size he came to. I had an opportunity to speak to the president before elections. After elections, I didn't speak to the president, so no one must accuse me of having influenced anything. I have not spoken to the president. Uh, I called him to congratulate him and to concede he didn't take my call. Uh, so he doesn't need my call. So we're fine. So when I spoke to the president before elections, 
I said to the president, we don't need deputy ministers. We don't need. There's no even a single deputy minister we need. Let the president take the country into confidence as to why this deputy minister. Why? Which one, uh, uh, comrades? Why, which one? Well, I'm trying to think. Which one? Because those people don't do anything. They oversee the administration. And they can't even interfere. They can't. They don't have power. The, the DG is there. Okay. Maybe we'll rather have two DGs. Because they are the implementing agents. They are, they are accountable accounting officers. Maybe. And then they can report to one minister. Not minister and deputy minister. For what? And who can be an acting minister? minister who can, deputy minister can't be an acting mm -hmm. minister when the minister is not there. <laughs> no, man. No. I think that perhaps it's a matter we need to test in the constitutional court as to is this not irrational and, and spending unnecessary money of our people with bodyguards and all those type of things to be declared irrational. It's unreasonable. It's unreasonable while wasting a lot of money on useless people. Deputy Minister of Sports, is this, is there Deputy Minister? Yes. Yes. That National Party person? Yeah. Yes. They just gave him a, a, a position of Deputy Minister of Sports. He has been there forever. Why? Because he's the one who closed the National Party with his faction to merge with the ANC. So they can't be seen to be getting rid of a National Party person. They use deputy minister positions for political expediency and patronage, not for development in this country. South Africa must be awake now. We don't need deputy ministers. Let's save South Africa money by removing the deputy ministers and reducing cabinet. Minister of Higher Education separate from Minister of Science and Technology. Science and Technology is higher education, most. Because science and technology is research. Research is higher education. There is no higher education without research. So let's, let's look at that. Let's just have minister of higher education. Not higher education, science and technology. Uh -uh. Then you can have directorates under ministry of education that concentrate on research, on science and technology. Because research must be permanent and research must be funded. There must be huge funding for research, particularly when it comes to science and technology. So let cabinet reduce drastically to show that we mean business. I think I've answered all the questions. The cost, again, we can't give you figures. We don't have figures. We'll go and reconcile our figures and then... Uh, when the time arrives, we'll give you figures. But please be rest assured. It is more than what it was in 2014. The organization has now grown. The organization is everywhere. And you have to be everywhere. And for you to be everywhere, you need more resources. Uh, it will be more than, in 2021, it will be more than what it is now uh, because uh, things, uh, they keep on increasing. Even if you buy 100 posters, let's say the, the organization hasn't grown, but you have to buy 100 posters. Uh, uh, the, the costs have increased. So it, it goes without saying that the budget of the EFF has increased. Comrades, we must now go back to the ground now. If the EFF is serious about being government in South Africa, we have to go back to the ground. It is possible. Uh, we have demonstrated that it is possible. Uh, 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 the numbers are showing under a huge pressure to campaign and not have one media house covering you. The SABC West 
SABC West, SABC says, we can't cover you today, we covered you three days ago. That's a response. We can't cover you today, we covered you three days ago. But what if there is news today? Because they must cover news. It was the most difficult. 2014 was much better. We had journalists dedicated to EFF campaign. We never had that to this, uh, this year. It was a complete, complete, complete blackout for EFF. We are not needed by anyone. We still made it on our own. Heavy criticism. How does Karima Brown litigate against the EFF? You still give her a platform to comment about the EFF and call that fair commentary. When these two are in court together and you call that ENCA a, a, an objective professional commentary when these people are, are litigating in court because you must ask her no you can assess the EFF I mean the elections and please avoid the EFF because you're conflicted no if you ask Karima Brown about anything else she's going to find a way of bringing the EFF into that topic that's how obsessed she was they must monitor her closely she will have heart problems these results will give her heart problems she, she must be monitored she was deep in it how can I destroy EFF who does she think she is to destroy the EFF the EFF is back now much bigger and stronger Ranjini Peter Bruce that old one who must go to old age uh, Max Dupris uh, which one? News 24. Oh, Sanef. We defeated Sanef. <laughs> we defeated it. Sanef is defeated. We defeated a multimillionaire, billionaire, Trevor Manuel, who thought he was going to declare our uh, commentary and speeches illegal before elections. We showed him that money can't buy the courts. Let's hope our judges won't be uh, uh, bought by this Tumamina nonsense. This Tumamina, any judge one that wants to subscribe, subscribe to Tumamina, you must know you are subscribing to a flop. <coughs> it's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. Judges must look at the law, not a Tumamina campaign. Tumamina, Tumamina to where? We are fine. We are not too mum in any way. We are doing well. So, journalists do not get involved. I mean, he says I dismissed uh, polls. I didn't dismiss polls. They dismissed themselves. Yes. The whole, all of them, they couldn't find it right. So the EFF was right to dismiss them. All of them, I Ipsos was emotional. Ipsos was emotionally involved, mm. giving ANC 60, 61. 62, 63. Mm. There's no science. Where, 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 where is science there? We are sitting at 57. 58 in Gauté. So you could see that even the, 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 the researchers were emotional about it. It was a difficult election. 1994 was a Mickey Mouse chief. This one was the most difficult one. Look at ANC. is trying to show a brave face and close uh, Little House streets and all that. Even the party, the mood, is not a, a mood of winning. Mm -mm. They, they, they want to celebrate. The body is there, but the soul inside says, you are living a lie. It's a lie. You are losing. You have lost. And that's where the ANC must start. When you lose, it doesn't matter if it's one vote. You don't celebrate. You ought to say through action to South Africans, we have had you. So when you vote after losing votes, you are saying to them, we don't care even if you don't vote, even if you didn't vote for us. 
So, these celebrations is another way of showing those who have not voted for the ANC a middle finger. So, comrades, fighters, remain focused. We don't want fanatics here. In the EFF, we don't want fanatics. We don't want people who are saying, hey, the EFF was supposed to win. Hey, our votes are stolen. Uh -uh, there's no vote that is stolen. Go and work. Go to the ground. Those are the results. That's what we have done. Stop being a fanatic. Go and work the ground and subject yourself to the discipline of the organization. When you are told, this is the area you must concentrate on, do exactly that. We speak from a position of experience. Don't be fanatics. In the EFF, we thrive through superior logic. Don't come and, and create an impression that, no, people, his elections are stolen, hey, we should have won, there is a problem, and cause unnecessary tensions. We said to you, fighters, this elephant will be eaten bit by bit. We will not remove this ANC, a party of hundred and something years from power in less than no time. South Africans believe in the EFF, but they want the EFF to consistently prove itself. There's no South African who's going to give a, a new party year a 51% mandate boo without a proper experience and demonstration that you will not play with power when they give it to you. South Africans are saying, beat by beat, let's go. Let's go, boys and girls. You're on the right track. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You should hear this whispering by South Africans who are saying, you are on the right track. Stop demanding unreasonable things from South Africans. South Africans are the most reasonable people who are saying to you, we hear you, Kanyane, Kanyane will get there. And that's where we're going. ENCA is, is, is offended. It wants the right to reply. <laughs> okay. But I'd like to ask a direct question sure. to all the top six leaders here. Yeah. Who of you is not coming back as an official? In your national people's assembly, and you say there are some lazy leaders within the EFF. Who are those leaders? Can you give us names? And is the national chair Dalim Ofu, as we are saying, sometimes too busy in the courts? Is he coming back in respect of the position? And also, are we seeing a realignment of politics within the EFF going towards your national people's assembly? Thank no you. one is coming back yet. Yeah. No one. Mm. Anyone that says I'm coming back will be undermining the constitution of the EFF. Our term is ending in December. And then we'll know then what, happen, what happens. When I will give you a form if you want to know who's coming back. <laughs> so that you, you decide that in your branch. For now, none of you here qualifies to know who's coming back, who doesn't come back. The branches of the EFF will know that uh, 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 position. They are lazy leaders of the EFF. But you can't say this one and that one and that one. The conference will receive a report and it will make an assessment and it will take a decision. There is a culture in politics of laziness and we always emphasize this in the EFF that if you are going to present an alternative, you can't replace a tendency with the same tendency. The culture of laziness, we see it in the EFF. We see it, and we deal with it all the time. The national chairperson of the EFF is a senior concern, forever in court. When you deploy him and you don't get the results, you ought to be alive to that reality. We've got doctors who are in the national leadership, who are forever on call. You deploy them, they are never there. What do you do? You don't remove them. Because you are going to be an anti-intellectual party very soon. That those who are professionals and intellectuals must be isolated. 
you say to them, Chief, we are not happy. I'm giving you an assessment of Eastern Cape. That the chair was there, leading the forces there. The result could not be what we expected. We reinforced. We didn't remove him. He was there. Until the end. Towards the end, he himself said, you know what? Let me leave all these cases. Let me now go full time on the ground and work for the EFF victory. Because if he had continued to want to be full time in court and be in Eastern Cape, it was practically impossible. So it's an observation we're making. We might be wrong. The conference might come to a conclusion that says, hi, we actually need all top six people to be lawyers uh, and all of that. You see? So the uh, uh, DSG was in Northern Cape. I was in Limpopo. We are not happy about Limpopo. So you think? Yes. I did. So I should... You can remove me if you yeah. want. The EFF can... Now really I don't have problems. Shame. Anytime you can remove me. I was deployed in three provinces. Three. No one was deployed in three provinces. I was deployed in three provinces. We have not done well in Limpopo. Why should we lie about it? We must accept that we didn't do well. And we must go and check what are the problems in that province and fix those problems. If the problem was that the president was not helpful, let it be that conclusion. If the problem was that giving the president three provinces was not strategic, maybe he neglected Limpopo for other provinces, let that assessment be made. But we failed as we admit we failed, but we have not lost a vote. We actually got uh, 100 to 2014. We, yeah, we got uh, more than 100,000. We got 100,000 new votes in Limbobo. And took a seat from the ANC. And in the EFF, I mean, in the ENCA assessment of performance, that's a failure. If that's your conclusion, we are happy to accept it. 100,000 new votes is a failure in the standards of ENCA. We accept that. If that's your conclusion, we are failed. Let's go and make a, an assessment. So we are simply saying we could have done much better. In Khaute, we would have wished to bring the ANC below 50%. We didn't. They've got 50%. We got how much increase? 200,000 plus new votes. In the eyes of the ENCA, that's a failure. We, 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 we accept that. We, we, we are ready uh, to step down if that will make ENCA happy. <laughs> but unfortunately, ENCA doesn't have any role to play when it comes to that. It is a report we are taking to the conference in December. An honest assessment which uh, uh, fighters must uh, engage with. But having made that observation, generally, were happy. When it comes to telling the numbers yeah. and the assessment of our performance countrywide, we are all over the moon. We are the happiest political party in South Africa. We are the only party that is growing everywhere. Mm. Everywhere in South Africa. Yeah. There is no single voting station you can point to and say the EFF there is dying nowhere in South Africa. We are growing and our enemies are humbled. They won't make more noise about the EFF. No. Our enemies are working 24 hours, by the way, to try and find the reconfiguring of alliances uh, in the EFF top six and uh, lower structures. Our enemies are working very hard to find divisions in the EFF. Our enemies are working very hard to find fault with any individual amongst us here in the leadership. Every day there is an inquiry about this or that. When you get 70% in an exam, hmm? 
Hmm. How did you achieve that? Did you really write yes, the right. exam yourself? Mm. Or was there a ghost? <laughs> How are you guys getting this thing right? You can't do anything and get it right in the eyes of our enemies. The, the enemies fighters will always look for something. But I can tell you now, they will never defeat this left party. We are the only left party in South Africa strive, striving for socialism. There's no any other party that fights for socialism in South Africa except the EFF. Yes. Not even Ivan Jim. Ivan Jim took the money of the workers and wasted it. EFF members in NUMSA must rise and demand accountability in NUMSA for every cent. How do you run a campaign without going to door to door and just hiring, <laughs> hiring uh, double caps? Double caps. Our members' man were eaten by NUMSA. NUMSA, IFF members must rise inside NUMSA. What type of luxurious campaign is this? Of a left party. A luxurious campaign of double cap buggies. And the most expensive posters. That color poster that comes with a begging board. Right? One. Is 27 rand. Just ask them if they printed 1 million posters, it means they've used 27 million just on posters, on putting them up on those baggies, and then the t shirts. The cheapest t shirt is 25 rand. If Ivan Jim printed 25 million, I mean 1 million t shirts, it's 25 million plus 27 million of posters. We're sitting at 55 million or plus. And then the buggies, double cap. <laughs> How do you hire double cap for campaign? A campaign is long base. What you call long base? Yeah, long base, base buggy. Double cap is a luxurious buggy. Jim takes the workers' money. Eh? Jim, takes, <laughs> Jim takes the workers' money to go and hire double cap. And then call that a socialist movement with double cap and say it's a campaigning buggies. And go and fetch some over self exaggerated person there who was in the EFF, Mulungi's uh, Rapodili, uh, and who over exaggerate himself. The Mbuseni says, no, we made him in the EFF to believe that, or he's powerful. He takes that guy to go and campaign. For that uh, uh, Numsa party <laughs> and Haula, <laughs> and the, the laziest people, <laughs> laziest people. Numsa has got members of EFF who are concerned because we got our members there. Their money gets wasted on a on a party that did not get a single vote. <laughs> Jim must be very humble. I see you in politics, I see union. To form a political party is not the same as forming a union where you find workers on a shop floor organized by capital. Most want you the village, Jim. You must go to villages. Jim must tell you how many villages he visited and where, except dishing out money of the workers. Dishing out money of the workers. The poor workers. Um, Kletama and I forget, sir. Kletama. He thought at taking EFF is going to get him a seat. He didn't get a seat. He's swimming in a pool of debt now. Kletama. And, uh, you know, fighters, stop entertaining those nyaupist on Twitter and uh, social media. They are useless, those people. He thought insulting us will get him votes. He over-exaggerated his hairstyle and thought it was appealing to people. And then he came with a new suit he said he got from that guy there in North Korea. He thought that suit is going to get him votes. He didn't get anything. 
Look at Jimmy Man. He thinks uh, people can be told by pastors and bishops yeah. to vote for a party. There's no bishop who can tell people what to vote for. <laughs> Even if they do, people will always exercise their right. All of these people combined, they saw the success of the EFF in 2014. Mm -hmm. And because they undermine us as yes. individuals mm, yes. and thought they were better than us, they can do better than what the EFF did. Jimmy Manu was actually not even hiding it. He says, I, I used to undermine the EFF. Look at them. But if, if you undermine this party, yeah, it can do better than the EFF. All of them combined, including Claudi. But Claudi, Shemai, uh, we must leave that one. That one uh, is a Vescopi uh, case. Ah, uh, Vescopi. Uh, that one you can't entertain. I think Claudi, the, these people, when they take him to rallies, they deliberately make sure he doesn't take his medication. Ah, uh, uh, that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I sit and I ask myself, how, how did this guy lead the SABC? Those people who were listening to this guy. Eh? Dali used to work with him there. As, 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 as. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the region there. The <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, generally, don't look at other people and undermine them from a distance and think you can do better than them. We have humbled these souls. They are nothing, all of them combined. They can all take their votes, bring them together. They will never come anywhere close to the EFF. EFF's chief is something else. It's a boomerang. You can't touch it. It's a, it's a very big thing. This thing called EFF is going to make things here in South Africa. Things are going to happen here. This thing is big. Many people undermine it. They don't see what's coming for this country. The EFF is the big solution to South Africa. You can undermine it. You can say the things you want to say. We are not concentrating on those things. We are focused. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you and have a great uh, day. The press conference is adjourned.